So let's look at uh, stochastic processes uh, a bit more. As you recall, stochastic process is a collection of uh, realizations. It's a time function. And the key property was that if you look at any time instant, you see a random variables. So from here, you see random variable x of t1. And uh, from here, you see random variable x of uh, t2, a t instance. So of course, you can uh, think of it's a density function right? for x1. And uh, x1 uh, is labeled with the t1. So in general, you could assume that this density function, of course, will depend on where you are looking at. So same thing here also, right? So you have the density function of the random variable, but at time instant t2. Now, because you have two random variables, you can also look at their joint density function, right? But on the other hand, these, uh, these random variables belong to time instant t1 and t2. So in general, you could, uh, if you begin to look into more uh, in detail, you see that each random variable is characterized by its density function. But it is possible that this density function also is a function of, uh, so in addition to, of course, x, it's also a function of the time instance at which you are looking at. And the joint density functions are uh, uh, to functions of it, <coughs> uh, time instance uh, t1, uh, uh, t1 and t2. <coughs> so if I generalize this and uh, I look at uh, time instance t1, t2, etc., tn, and generate a set of random variables, right? x1 through xn. Remember, x1 corresponds to t1, x2 corresponds to t2, xn corresponds to tn. And if you want to characterize uh, all of them jointly, we can look at their joint density function. So from this an uh, analogy, it's going to look like Uh, so the n random variables at the time instance uh, t1, etc., tn. Okay. Also, you can do this. So for which n should I do it? You can do it for all. You can do it for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, 3, 4, all uh, values of n. And you can see things are beginning to get complicated. But this gives you this joint density function for all values of n gives you the complete characterization of the stochastic process. Uh, but we can see it's hopeless. We are not going to sit here and study all of them. So generally, the process is studied using the first order and the second order characterization. And uh, so that's what I want to talk to you a little more about. It. So in this con, so this is the, the complete first order characterization is using the first order density function. The complete second order characterization is using the second order density. Because if you have the second order density function, you can find all the derived features like mean and variance, right? Uh, so first order uh, complete characterization is you, you just need the density function. But once you have that, <coughs> you can have derived features, right? Uh, what is a derived feature? The mean of the process. Uh, but that is what? x multiplied by fx, x, t, dx. But this is going to be a function of, uh, this is going to be a function of the density function. But uh, there is, of course, you know, there is less information here uh, than this, right? This has got all the information. Of course, you can define a, a variance also. Similarly, you can do a, uh, this is a second order characterization. Uh, so second order complete characterization is uh, use, using, of course, using the joint density function two random variables. 
So I, when I write like this, I mean whatever random variables are there. If there are three of them, this will be x1, x2, x3. And again, like here, you can have uh, derived feature is the autocorrelation function, which I gave you some, uh, we went through several. So that's the analogy of the uh, <coughs> covariance function. So it's in fact xt1, xt2 in general with a star here. I explained you the reason because when you put t1 equal to t2, this will become absolute value of xt1 squared. So that's like the average power because if this is voltage, square the voltage, expected value is averaging. But in any case, this is double integral x1, x2, fx, uh, x1, x2, uh, t1, t2 dx1, dx2. So notice that in general the autocorrelation function is going to be a function of t1 and t2. This has got less information compared to this. That's why we call this the complete characterization and the derived features. Uh, so I have uh, two features, one and two. Uh, so if you, of course, you can go to the third order characterization and so on, nth order. So this will be the complete nth order characterization, right? Uh, so we say stochastic process characterization is complete if you have the joint density function for all values of n, which is uh, going to take a lot of time, right? So we are only going to do, usually it's just uh, do you do the first order and second order characterization. All right, now what? Now we want to remember, we are always interested in invariance or stationarity. What that means is we want to see whether the underlying process has some, uh, some behavior that you can uh, pin it down, right? So, or more precisely, if I look again at the time, I see, I take, uh, look at here, I, I take time instance T1 through Tn, let me draw it here. So you have uh, various realizations, right? So all these realizations are for uh, uh, the uh, psi which represents the randomness. Right? So if I take the time instance t1, uh, t2, ti, tn, I generate of course random variables. Right? So I generate random variables x1, x2, xi, xn. And these have joint density function x1, x2, etc., xn, corresponding to time instance t1, t2, etc., tn. So this we have. So what what we want to see is if you shift in time, does the behavior remain the same? That's what we mean by stationary. If you come back tomorrow and do the same experiment do we get the same results. So, which means that if I shift everything by some uh, some time c, so this will be my t1 plus c, and I shift to t2, this will be t2 plus c, and this will be, right, hmm? right, ti plus c, and uh, this will be a tn plus c. And I have new sets of random variables, x1 prime, x2 prime, xi prime, xn prime. And remember, once you have new set of random variables, you also have their joint density function. Right? So I'm going to write it as x1, x2, x. These are x1 prime, x2 prime, etc. And uh, but time instant is notice that this is not the same time instant somewhere else. But everything is shifted by so t2 plus c, etc., tn plus c. So now you can begin to see, I have the complete characterization here, I have the complete characterization here. 
But these random variables are just a translated version. So we said things are stationary in this in the in time in a strict sense. Remember, this is the complete characterization, or these are the complete characterization. If you get equality here, we say the process is strictly stationary. That means a shift in time is not going to change uh, any of the fundamental properties of the process. So I am introducing you the notion of strict sense stationarity. So why the word strict we would see? Uh, so, uh, uh, the bottom line is the stochastic process should be insensitive to shift to translation in time. But let me make it more precise. So, you, whenever you shift it, you set another set of random variables. These two sets of random variables should be identical in the distribution function for what value of n? I didn't specify n, so uh, all values of n. So remember, you have all these joint density functions. You shift all of them by the same amount. Then you get a new set of density functions. The left side and right side should match for all values of n. You can see this is a lot of restrictions, right? You are asking for too much. That's why we call it strict sense stationarity. So <coughs> rather than, uh, so essentially, if you have t, ti i equal to 1 through n, and the ti plus c for i equal to 1 through n. I generate the random variables here, of course, uh, x1, x2, xn. Here I generate the random variables x1 prime, x cetera, xn prime. Remember, xn prime means x of tn plus c, right? xn means x of tn, right? So I have two sets of random variables, and I have two. I have their joint density functions x1 through xn at the time instance t1, etc. at tn, and here I have uh, x1 prime, etc. Uh, but if you want to compare, you don't want to write x and y here. That's these are dummy variables. Random variables are here. Notice the random variables are not the same. Here, I can put y1, then I just put y1 here, right? But they are not the same because you can see they are not the same time instance. So, of course, as a rule, these are not going to be equal. But if you have situations where this is identically equal for all n, then you call the process to be strict and stationary. So, you can see it is too much. We are asking for too much because this also need to be true and for all c i didn't specify uh, i didn't specify what the how much you are shifting you can shift it by any amount you like hello you understand the, at least you understand the concept right so that means if you come back tomorrow same time Whatever we are measuring, their joint density function should be the same as if it was today. Because it's, uh, this is, uh, so we will restrict now to first order and the second order strict sense stationary. Uh, so generally, uh, let me call it, yes, 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 strict sense stationary processes. So, so what is strict, first order strict sense stationary? You only consider n equal to 1, right? So this would be, if a process is first order strict sense stationary, x1, and it's a shifted version, should have the same density function. Look at here. This should be the same as, this two should be the same, right? So what is what do you conclude from here? This should be true for any c. Right, so this should be true for any c, including c equal to minus t, any c. So if you put c equal to minus t, what do you get? Or you can conclude from here that this should be the same as, do you see this? If, if this is true for all c, then it cannot be a function of c, right? 
Well, I just told you, if put c equal to minus t, then this will be zero. That means fx of t is same as fx of x, right? That's what I have written here. So the big conclusion is, if a process is first order strictly stationary, its density function is not a function of time. You see here, this is not a function of time. Not a function of uh, t. So first order strict and stationarity says uh, the density, density function is not a function of time. Why? Which means that if the, this process is first order stationary, if you look here, if you look here, if you look anywhere, the density function is identical, right? So what is one consequence of this? From uh, So first order... So we, I just showed you that the this means the, joy, the the density function is not a function of uh, t. Uh, just to make it clear, of course that's a density function. That means what? Look at here. This means expected value of x of t is what? Integral x f x x t dx. But this is x f x dx. This is going to be. I know, but it's, it's not a function of time because look here, there is no time. So it will be a constant, right? So first order processes, the density function is uh, not a function of time. Also, uh, expected value of x of t is a constant. So let's look at uh, second order strict and stationary processes. So from here, you put n equal to 2. So if n is 2, you have fx of x1, comma x2, uh, t1, comma t2 is, must be the same as fx prime x1, comma x2, uh, t1 plus c, t2 plus c. So what can, for any c, what can you conclude from here? This should be a function of? Anybody? Hmm? What? Of course, it's a joint density function, whether at t1 and t2 or at t1 plus c and t2 plus c should be identical for all values of c. So as a result, hmm? which, uh, so uh, is it a function? Can you say that this is not a function of t1 and Neither T1 nor T2? No. What? Yes or no? What can you say about, you can say a little more, because you have freedom C here, right, in C. So try putting various values of, of course you put C equal to zero, you get the left side and right side are equal. Put C equal to something else, what do you see as an obvious one, just to make some. Suppose I put it C equal to minus T2, then? What is the time function? So you should be able to conclude that if you have this expression, it should be only a function of t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1. Huh? Oh, no, no, not absolute value because look here, uh, you can put c equal to t2, I mean minus t2, this will be 0, right? This will become t1 minus t2. Or you put c equal to minus t1, then this will be 0. This will become t2 minus t1. So it will be a function of, as I wrote, t1, either t1 minus t2 or it's uh, the difference of time indices. So if a process is strict uh, sensation in the second order, it's a PDF depends only on t1 minus t2. So from here, one simple consequence is, from here, look at here. If I, if I look at the Rxx uh, t1 gamma t2, what happens? This is double integral, x1, x2. So this is, of course, the same as, look at here. Uh, so consequently, I can write a second order strict and stationary process like this now, right? t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1. Because I just showed you, this is the same as t1 minus t2. So if you plug this in here,
uh, t1 minus t2 dx1 uh, dx2 uh, this will come out to be some function of t1 minus t2 right right because x1 x2 goes away maybe this is not clear so let me write it here so this is a double integral x1 x2 fx x1 x2 and then this is t1 minus t2 right dx1 dx2 x1 x2 goes away so this is going to be some function of uh, t1 minus t2 right remember this is there is star here so uh, this is uh, so the, uh, we can write that uh, if a process is uh, if a process is strict and stationary we get uh, a, a, we get a, a, this result as free So this is a byproduct. Well, the byproduct is that if the process is second order strict and stationary, then the autocorrelation function is only a difference of uh, t1 minus t2. Okay. So, uh, so this is the this is the definition of strict and stationarity, and those are two consequences. What are the two consequences? One is uh, the, from the first order strict and stationarity, you get the mean to be constant. From the second order strict and stationarity, you get the autocorrelation to be a function of t1 minus uh, t2. And uh, sometimes even this is hard to check because look at here. If you want to check the process is uh, strict and stationary, then you need to compute the, you need to know the density function and you need to make sure it's not a function of time. If you want to check it to be second order strict and stationary, you need to make sure it's only a t function of t1 minus t2. What is that is bothering you there? You keep looking there. What is your problem? You can ask me, I'll explain to you. What is it? It's clear, you keep looking there. All right, so you can see this is a still a high standard strict sense stationarity. So you can all, if you want to relax the assumption or you say, I don't want to deal with the stationarity by going into the density function. Remember, if you want to deal with strict sense stationarity, you have to deal with the density function. Generally, the density functions are not known. So if you ask, give me a lower standard, then we go into another notion of stationarity. Remember, that's why I call this strict sense stationarity. So the other notion of stationarity is uh, a wide sense of stationary processes. So remember what we are doing. We have strict sense stationarity, but that deals with the joint density functions. And if you don't, if you, if you, to lower our standards, or we, or in other words, to come up with a definition which does not use the joint density function, then we can uh, concentrate on the consequences. Look here. The first, look at this, first order strict sense stationarity uh, gives you constant mean, right? Second order uh, strict sense stationarity gives you the autocorrelation function of, uh, to be a function of t1 minus t2. So I'm going to uh, say that a process is wide sense stationary, generally we write it like this. If uh, expected value of x of t is a constant, And the autocorrelation function, uh, which is expected value of xt1 
xt2 star is a function of only t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1 right so these are the definition uh, so we take this as our definition right so you can see what we are doing we look at the properties or consequences there and then we use that consequence to start a new definition so which one is stronger that is stronger or this is stronger anybody why is it that why is the strict sense stationarity stronger because look at that if you have strict sense stationarity those two conditions are free if those conditions are free you get this for automatically so you should be able to see that if a process is strict sense stationary it's automatically white sense stationary right so i can write that strict sense stationarity i just proved to you that implies white sense stationarity but you can clearly see if i just give you this there is no reason to assume that the density functions are going to be so in general this is not true right so in general white sense stationarity is not going to tell you anything about the joint density functions except there is an exception except when uh, x of t is a gaussian process so let me just to prove that quickly well yeah so what does the star means over well i i explained to you i mean if the process is a real process then this is the autocorrelation function uh, when we have a complex uh, process we want star here so that look here when t1 equal to t2 this becomes x of t squared right x absolute value squared so if you have a uh, that will be the power right power a real quantity so uh, and also remember uh, i told you the uh, this is an uh, the uh, this has a non negative definite property so if you want this autocorrelation to be non negative definite property you also uh, you need the complex conjugate in here so the important thing or the, to give you a physical meaning put t1 equal to t2 then this becomes expected value of xt1 absolute value squared right absolute value squared of any complex number especially in electrical engineering if you think of this as voltage then that's the uh, mean square of the mean square value of the voltage right work done etc right or at least power right all right so let me so, uh, so you need to know what's a gauss let me just prove that exception then we are done with uh, this chain of thought so the question is what is a gaussian process so we say x of t is gaussian so that's the definition of a gaussian uh, process if you arbitrarily sample a, a, a the a process and generate random variables they should be jointly gaussian and uh, so f of uh, x of uh, x x1 x2 etc xn uh, t1 etc t1 has the gaussian distribution which i think we have gone over this uh, uh, where r is the expected value of x x transpose uh, but it's a matrix whose ijth entry is uh, xtj star so this is going to be r x x t i comma t j that's what it is so you can also look at the characteristic function of this which is a bit easier so the characteristic function of these random variables remember 
that will be omega 1, omega 2, etc., omega n. So this is e raised to minus j uh, mu x t omega You, so uh, this is very, if it is single random variable, you remember it is e raised to minus j omega x, I mean mu, mu omega minus half sigma squared omega squared. So if I write this up, this is e raised to minus uh, j summation mu i t omega i, i equal to 1 through n minus double summation or T i a comma T j omega i omega j by 2. This is a standard expression and uh, this is the advantage of uh, doing uh, the having done the uh, two and more random variables together. So you can see this is easily follows from the we did this also for two random variables. So this is the joint density, a joint characteristic function for n Gaussian random variables. Now look, the proof is, what is that we want to show? Look here, we want to start with saying that the, the Gaussian, hello, look at, uh, we have a, st a Gaussian process which is white and stationary. I am going to show that that's the same as saying that it is strict and stationary. If it is uh, if it is white and stationary, what is the definition on the mean and what is the restriction on the mean and the autocorrelation function? Anybody? Look at here. So I'm going to make the so suppose let's say uh, let's say x of t is uh, white and stationary. Okay. Then look, I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to make the mean constant. Look here. These are the means. So I'm going to make this constant and the autocorrelation function. Look at here, this is the only place it appears, nowhere else. So I'm going to make this Ti minus Tj. So this is the characteristic function for a white and stationary Gaussian process. Now let us see what, uh, what would be the characteristic function of a strict uh, uh, process. So let's go into the general process. We want a translation uh, to be uh, a translation in time should be uh, should not affect the joint density function. Look at here, joint density function is here. As you know, the joint density function and characteristic function are one and the same, right? Transforms. So instead of looking at here, you can look at here. A translate t. Look at here. T only appears here. So if you translate t1 to t1 plus or ti to ti plus c, and this you make tj plus c, what happens? No change. That means the shifted random variables have exactly the same characteristic function and the same density function for any, look at, uh, there is no restriction on n for all values of n, for all values of c, that's the definition for the strict and stationarity, right? Somewhere we wrote it down, right? For the second block. So this means that from here it also follows that it is x of t is uh, strict and stationary. So this is the big theorem. A process is strict and stationary, it's always white and stationary, right? If a process is white and stationary, it need not be strict and stationary, except when it is Gaussian process. So at that time, you don't have to say which, just a stationary Gaussian means it's both strict and stationary and of course white and stationary. So all you need is for strict and stationarity for Gaussian, you need constant means and you need an autocorrelation function which depends on Ti minus Tj, nothing else. You don't need a third order moments because the joint order, joint characteristic function only, joint density function of a Gaussian process only depends on, is completely characterized by the second order moments. So that's the concept of uh, stationarity.